Welcome to part two, where we'll be taking a look at some of the smaller coolers, comparing fan noise from all of the coolers, and we'll show you how to choose a new one. If you haven't seen part one, then please just click on the link below. There's only one place to be for a new PC. QuietPC.com now let's take a look at our third set of coolers, this time moving to the medium sized category where we have the Noctua U9S and the Saif Katana 4. These coolers are both what I would call your typical low noise workhorse coolers for everyday use. So home systems, office PCs, in fact any PC that is just being used for general work or browsing etc. These are typically what I would recommend to customers who perhaps have quite limited space in their systems but generally have fairly hot running processors. In this situation, these coolers offer an ideal low noise solution. Even these coolers by default have little in the way of noise at their lowest settings. When housed in a good case, they can be difficult to hear, even when the fans are on at full speed. The Saif Katana 4 cooler is ideal for use on processors up to around 100 watts, while the Notchua can impressively cool processors up to 130 watts, which is incredible for a cooler of this size. Finally, let's take a look at our fourth and final set of coolers. This time moving to the small size category, and we have the Saif Shuriken Rev B and also the Jellied Slim Silence I+. Coolers like these tend to be used where space inside the case is limited, as the Shuriken is only 64mm tall, while the Jellied I Plus is a mere 28mm tall. The Shuriken is ideal for media centre or smaller systems where space is often at a premium. The iPlus cooler is really only about as good as a stock cooler in terms of performance and noise, but if space is really incredibly tight then this could be the only cooler that will fit. The Saif Shuriken Rev B can cool processors up to 95 watts, while the Slim Silence is only recommended for processors up to 65 watts. Okay, so before moving on to how you can actually determine which cooler is suitable for your system, let's have a quick listen to each of the coolers in turn with the microphone the same distance away from the centre of each fan and let's see what noise we can pick up. During the testing all of the coolers will be placed on a map to isolate them from the desktop. Now starting with the fans switched off, I'll then start the fans at 6 volts, which will simulate the fan running at just above idle speed. Then after a few seconds I'll change that to 9 volts, which will simulate the fan just starting to approach full load. Finally I'll switch the fans to 12 volts, which is the equivalent of the fan running at full speed. Remember though that all coolers will be noisy at full speed, but for the most part if chosen correctly with a bit of cooling headroom for the processor you have, the coolers you are about to hear should rarely if ever reach full speed. Remember this is subjective at best, but at least you will get an idea of how the coolers sound relative to each other. So there you have it, the relative noise comparisons of these eight featured CPU coolers. 
Now remember these coolers are just a small sample from our large range, so please don't think that you need necessarily buy one of these and do click on the link shown below to check out the full range on our website. So now until the final part of the video, which will take a look at how you can determine which cooler will be suitable for your system. So the very first thing we need to know is exactly which CPU model you have and also the wattage so that we know how much heat it generates. This is known as the TDP. The reason this is important is because if you have a hot running CPU, then we need to get a cooler that's going to be both capable of keeping it cool and quiet in operation. And if we simply choose a small, cheap CPU cooler, that's clearly going to be inadequate and have no benefit whatsoever. Similarly, using a large cooler on, say, a low watt, 35 watt processor is going to be a complete overkill and quite probably a waste of money too. Now I'm going to demonstrate on my PC how to find the wattage using a free utility called CPU-Z. This will also help us determine which socket the motherboard uses, because this is also important as any replacement CPU cooler will need to be compatible with that socket. And I'm going to explain that now as I download and run CPU-Z so I can show you how to find both your CPU maker model and also the socket type. So the first thing we need to do is go to the website where we can download CPU-Z. So if you open your browser and type in www.cpuid.com and there you can see CPU-Z. Now we need to download that for Windows. On this page we need to scroll down a bit. And we're going to download the setup in English. Just click download now. Okay, so we're going to save that and you can save that to either your downloads folder or to your desktop. Once that downloads, you can open that up and you can start the installation, but I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, let's move ahead a few minutes. Well, as you can see, it's now created a desktop icon and it's this we need to open to see what we have. Okay, there it is. That's the main screen in CPU-Z. So on there you've got the name of the processor, and this is quite an old one, it's a Core i5-2500K. And as you can see the max TDP or the wattage is 95 watts. Here in the package you can also see the socket type, and in this case it's 1155. Now if you want to send this information to us so we can make a recommendation, just click on the About tab. And if you look in the bottom of there, you can see there's a button that says SaveReport.html. And this will basically save all the information about your system into an HTML file, which is basically a web page that you can open up and take a look at. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just going to tell it where to save it. In this case, it's on the desktop. So if we click on the file that's just been created, we can see there's all the information in there that we need. Now this can be attached if required to an email and that can be sent to ourselves in our technical department. And we can take a look at that for you and make some recommendations. Now, generally speaking, the size of a cooler is an indication of how much heat it can dissipate. The bigger the cooler, the more heat it can remove from the processor. And the TDP figures are usually listed on our website in the cooler specifications. Now, the second thing we need to know is how much space you have between the top of the CPU and the side or lid of the case. This will ensure that we choose a cooler that's not going to be too tall. After all, you want to be able to replace the side or top panel once the cooler is fitted. Finally, you need a rough idea of the space you have around the processor so you don't order a cooler that's too bulky and that might not fit because of surrounding components or other obstructions. Once you roughly know how much space you have, then we can rule out coolers that are either too tall or those that may snag other components in the system when you're trying to fit them. Of course, if this all sounds a bit complicated, then you can always contact our technical support via email and we can recommend a cooler for you. So in order to do that, we would need to know the following. The first thing we need is the information about your PC's hardware, gathered from the CPU-Z as an HTML file, which should be attached to the email. Secondly, we need to know how much room you have between the top of the processor and the side or lid of the case. Now, third and finally, we need a clear photo showing the inside of the system so that we can gauge roughly how much space you have for a replacement cooler. We can then take a look at that information and get back to you with a few suggestions. Well, that's it. We hope you found this video helpful, and if you do, please leave a thumbs up below. That's it for now, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next video.